Father-children relationships are typically filled with love, affection, and care. They are seen as bonds that withstand the test of time, nurturing and shaping the lives of those involved. But what happens when those bonds take a dark turn? The harrowing case of Robert Farr Carson, where not one, but three innocent lives were tragically taken. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeco. Where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you! Robert Farr Carson was born on February 22, 1969, in Winchelsea, Victoria, Australia. He was the son of William John Farr Carson and Margaret Mary Farr Carson, née Condon. He had one sister, Diane. Farr Carson grew up in a working-class family and attended Winchelsea High School. After graduating from high school, he worked as a truck driver and a window cleaner. Far Carson's journey was marked by a series of significant events that would ultimately shape his path. Far Carson's life took a significant turn when he met Cindy Gambino in February 1990. The two began a relationship, and their bond grew stronger over time. In October 1994, their first son, Jai, was born, followed by Tyler in July 1998. Jai was 20 years old, and Tyler was 7 years old. Far Carson took a redundancy package from his job in 1996 and embarked on a lawn mowing franchise venture, which unfortunately led to financial losses of 40,000 Australian dollars. Despite the challenges, the couple persevered, and in 2000 they got married. Their family expanded with the birth of their youngest son, two year old Bailey, in December 2002. However, as time went on, their relationship faced difficulties, and the couple separated amicably in 2004. It's important to note that Far Carson faced personal struggles during this time. He dealt with avoidant personality disorder and bouts of depression, seeking help from psychologists and psychiatrists to cope with the separation. He was prescribed antidepressants to aid in his mental well-being. It is within this backdrop of strained relationships and personal challenges that the events leading to the tragic incident would unfold. On that fateful Father's Day in 2005, the lives of Far Carson, his sons, and the entire community would be forever changed. Around 7 p.m. on September 4, 2005, Robert Far Carson was returning his three sons, Jai, Tyler, and Bailey, to their mother, Cindy Gambino, after a Father's Day visit. Little did anyone know that this ordinary car ride would end in unimaginable horror. As Far Carson's white 1989 VN Commodore vehicle traveled along the Prince's Highway between Winchelsea and Geelong, it veered off the road, crashed through a fence, and plunged into a nearby farm dam. The car quickly filled with water and submerged, trapping the three young boys inside. Despite his own struggle, Far Carson managed to escape from the sinking vehicle and desperately sought help. He alerted another driver who took him to the nearby town of Winchelsea, where he contacted emergency services. Tragically, the three boys, unable to free themselves, drowned inside the submerged car. The news of this horrific incident that would deeply impact the community, leaving everyone confused and heartbroken. The loss of Jai, Tyler, and Bailey was an immense tragedy that shook the community to its core. The senseless deaths of innocent children left everyone searching for answers, desperate to understand how such a heartbreaking event could occur. In the aftermath of the drownings, an extensive investigation was launched to uncover the truth behind this heartbreaking incident. After three months of diligent work, the police prepared murder charges against Robert Far Carson. On December 14, 2005, authorities went to Far Carson's residence, 
but he was not present. However, accompanied by his lawyer, he presented himself at the Geelong police station later that day, where he was arrested and charged with three counts of murder. The investigation revealed disturbing details that would become central to the prosecution's case. Witnesses came forward, including a friend of Farquharson's, Shane Atkinson, who discovered him on the side of the road after the incident. Atkinson testified that Farquharson had refused to call emergency services immediately, opting to travel to Winchelsea to inform his wife instead. Another witness, a bus driver named Greg King, claimed that Farquharson had expressed thoughts of revenge against his former wife and spoke of taking away what mattered most to her, the children. King's testimony played a crucial role in building the case against Farquharson. The court also heard expert testimony from a sleep and respiratory medicine specialist, Matthew Naughton, who questioned Farquharson's claim of a coughing fit leading to the accident. Naughton believed that such an extreme coughing fit leading to loss of consciousness was highly unlikely. The prosecution built a compelling case, highlighting the various pieces of evidence and witness testimonies that pointed to a deliberate act. However, Farquharson had his own version of events and relied on a defense of losing consciousness due to a coughing fit. The trial captivated the nation, leaving them torn between the heartbreaking loss of innocent lives and the possibility that this tragic incident was not a deliberate act. The jury faced the daunting task of untangling the truth amidst a web of emotional turmoil and conflicting narratives. After three days of deliberations, the jury delivered their verdict on October 5, 2007. The courtroom was filled with anticipation as the forewoman announced the outcome, leaving both the Farquharson and Gambino families on edge. The jury found Robert Farquharson guilty on all three counts of murder. The news reverberated through the courtroom, evoking a range of emotions from disbelief to relief as justice was sought for the innocent lives lost. Cindy Gambino, the boy's mother, broke down upon hearing the verdict, her grief intensifying as the reality of the situation settled in. The weight of the tragedy and the courtroom proceedings had taken a toll on all those involved. Justice Cummins allowed a short recess to give the court an opportunity to compose itself before proceedings resumed. The impact of the verdict was palpable, leaving a lasting impression on everyone present. On November 16, 2007, Farquharson was sentenced to three terms of life imprisonment without parole. As the courtroom emptied, the families left to grapple with the harsh reality of their shattered lives. But the story did not end there. Farquharson, maintaining his innocence, announced his intention to appeal the convictions, sparking a new chapter in this tragic tale of loss, grief, and the pursuit of justice. On December 17, 2009, Farquharson's conviction was unanimously overturned by three appeal judges. They criticized the trial judge, the prosecution, and key prosecution witness Greg King, leading to the granting of a retrial. The retrial commenced on May 4, 2010, with a new jury hearing the case. The courtroom once again became the stage for emotional testimonies, expert analyses, and a quest for the truth. After 11 weeks of intense legal proceedings, the jury retired to consider their verdict on July 19, 2010. Three days later, they delivered their decision, once again finding Robert Farquharson guilty of murdering his three sons. On October 15, 2010, Farquharson was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 33 years. The conclusion of the trial marked the end of a long and painful journey for both families and the beginning of a life behind bars for the convicted father. The impact of this case reached far beyond the confines of the courtroom. It touched the hearts of people across the nation, raising questions about the complexities of human emotions, the consequences of actions driven by revenge, and the enduring power of grief. In the aftermath of the trial, the case of Robert Farquharson continued to captivate the public's attention. The devastating loss of Jai, Tyler, 
and Bailey Farr Carson left a lasting impact on those who followed the case closely. Cindy Gambino, the boy's mother, had to navigate the difficult path of grief and healing. She initially expressed doubts about Farr Carson's guilt, but eventually came to believe in his responsibility for their deaths. The tragedy extended beyond the courtroom, reaching into the lives of the extended families, friends, and the wider community. The loss of three innocent lives touched the hearts of many, leading to collective mourning and soul-searching. The media played a significant role in documenting and disseminating information about the case. Journalists grappled with the delicate task of reporting on a deeply personal tragedy while respecting the privacy and emotions of those involved. Books were written to explore different perspectives and shed light on the complexities of the case. Authors like Megan Norris, Helen Garner, and Chris Brooke offered their insights and analysis sparking discussions and debates among readers. True Crime Podcasts also dedicated episodes to examining the Far Carson case, presenting contrasting perspectives, and allowing listeners to delve deeper into the details and implications of the tragedy. Beyond the legal proceedings and media coverage, the legacy of Jai, Tyler, and Bailey Far Carson remains a testament to the enduring love and memory of three young lives cut short their spirits live on in the hearts of those who knew them. The case of Robert Farr Carson serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating consequences of actions driven by anger and revenge. It highlights the importance of recognizing and addressing mental health issues that can contribute to such tragic outcomes. While the legal process provided a form of justice, the scars left behind by this unimaginable tragedy continued to heal slowly. The memory of Jai, Tyler, and Bailey remains etched in the collective consciousness, reminding us of the need to cherish and protect our loved ones. And with that, we conclude our journey through the case of Robert Farr Carson. May the lives lost in this heartbreaking event serve as a reminder to value the precious gift of life and the profound impact our actions can have on others. Thank you for joining us, and may we strive to create a world where such tragedies are never repeated. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest true crime cases. We appreciate having you as part of our community as we explore the mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and remember justice may stay hidden in the darkest corner. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.